Here's what we got in the back. General Club, in the back of the day, one hundred ninety two thousand eight hundred thirty dollars for fifty two cents. Blossom County, in the back of the day, one hundred five thousand dollars, nine hundred fifty five dollars and forty cents. Elmig, in the back of the day, five hundred twenty five, five hundred eight thousand and sixty two cents. Now, a little bit of that, about nine something. 93, 94, 5 of that is last year. It's a good one. It's a good one. I'm sorry. You got to go. That's the night. They told me that we had to spend the night last year. General Fund, you remember Chris talking about the G1 Fund a while ago? We put it with the state of Georgia and we make two point something to send it to the The General Fund and the G1 Fund, we got 235,972 dollars in the sponsor account, G1 fund, $845,588.88. That's our financial situation. I don't know what's going on. Another announcement, we got a great faith of ministries. It's going to have a revival out here in the county of Bond for the 10th and foot. If I'm correct, they didn't the start on uh, Monday night now. Monday night? Yes. Six o'clock? Something like that. Everybody welcome to the team. Uh, and for the board members, there's the proof of it.
in a couple of weeks whenever you're ready, but we just need the approval from the board to go ahead and take care of this expense so we can have this for both courtrooms. This is so we've got to do it. Chris, where are we going to get this 25 file? Did you get any help with the law library? Uh, we're looking into the law library. I have not heard word back whether we can legally do, well, we can legally do that, but I have not heard to the from the, that that's a fund that's not administered by the county. I have not heard from uh, Gary. Gary, do that. We will try to take some or all of it that we can out of the law library. Right, and whatever's the remaining from that, the general fund, it will be from that. Mm -hmm. Basically, to cut it short, what this do is update this video system where this is coming from. Yes, sir. And they're, they're trying to order all of it at one time district wide. There's several counties in the court district. I think it's 13 or something like that. And trying to get place one order for everything by, I believe, December 1st. Right. If we approve this this morning, can you still find fun for it? Yes, sir. Through? Yes, sir. Okay. It could be all we can from the law library and then the general fund to make up the difference. Stages. 
of trying to get um, approved. But anyway, we're all going to have a, another round of COVID, and it's going to be coming during this winter time. In order for doing that, some of the COVID money that we have already fished out to y'all to uh, kind of look at, one of the things is a building that we actually need to go to store out in the evening. Like I'll run out of space and bring order to put that in. Under our declaration of emergency, um, we would normally advertise for this building. This building is just over $13,000 in order to put it up. Uh, normally, we would have to advertise that under our state of emergency, there are wax and under. We can waive those procurement rights and go ahead and push out and get our three bids like normal and go ahead and rent and put that building in. I ask y'all today if y'all would go ahead and exercise that state of emergency right so that we can move forward with this building and go ahead and get it in place open within the next week or two. Thank you. 
the first two in there with uh, the John Deere. They're both the exact same tractor, same horsepower tractor. Uh, I requested that everybody bid on the exact same horsepower on each tractor with the same bonus. That's the way every company got a fair bid on everything. The difference in the two John Deere's was uh, the warranty. That's the only difference in the one that's got a, a, a bigger warranty than the other one. One of them was a uh, 90, the other one was 92, 648, or 624, I'm sorry. What'd you say on the warranty again? That's the difference. That's the only difference in these two quotes. It's nothing but the warranty. It's the exact same track, it's just a warranty. Okay. The higher price is better warranty? Yep, that's it. It's better warranty.
right there we bought it. The plant we bought it in 2098. It was right outside of Perkins, Oregon. That's been almost 20, I've been 20, 23 years. Yeah. Yeah. No, come on, Sue. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And it had been jumped on the day one. We had the loader done, we had the final drive out of the done, over and over and over. So, yeah, that's my preference, right? That's just an opinion. So. My opinion is just a little heavy equipment. It's hard to beat Calico. The water is for the surface. Right. This thing dead up. They'll put a little on and on and on and rain down here and blow this little back and turn around. They got parts for them. They'll keep this thing going. That's right. these people in reference to the warranty 
that they view us as far as their equipment, it is a legal matter because that's what we're continuing with. So I, I don't know what, how many meetings he's been here, what his expertise is, what legal. And I'm not sure I haven't looked at his legal document where he became an attorney or something. But he just talked on that. And I'm going to make a, before this meeting's out, a recommendation. It's going to kind of address these kind of things. But anyway, I hold with that motion that we discuss this before we move on. We've had this problem from a legal standpoint before. It is a legal matter. You get into a courtroom, you need to leave them out. But the world is just not at all. You got a rebuttal? Huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> What'd you say? You got a rebuttal? It yeah, is not legal personnel for real estate. If you go back there and talk about it, it's legal legal. Okay. You do that, you bring the action, and I'll defend it. Well, what is that? Why don't we talk about that here? I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it from the paper right here. Well, that was good. My recommendation is go with, with Bud. Uh, uh, Bud, Mr. Thompson, he's over there, uh, department. And his recommendation, uh, recommendation is a Calico. I always heard of Calico. Uh, uh, good heavy equipment. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you nothing about Calico, but I don't know. You know the motion? Well, that's my recommendation. Yeah, have this motion. You want motion? You got that lid? I'll second that for the discussion. No, he didn't say no discussion. He said that's a promotion. Well, he didn't say no discussion. 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 Come on. I just second it for him. Go ahead and discuss it. On the uh, capability of $106,065. Mm -hmm. You got a warranty on it. Cage tractor which is at a $25 million part credit, which is $92,877 difference. Cheaper than the Calico. We got a test right for cutting grass that's been parked not long. Been towed. They brought us along the truck. It towed. It's been parked for over a month. Ford's motion is to he went with the recommendation of the Caterpillar. Yeah. Chairman, can I say Yes. Yes. What's the name?
15 was a regular scheduled meeting. Ma'am? The 15 was a regular scheduled meeting and the 22. The was a book, yeah, I had back, but September 15, that's a regular meeting. I read over my and got an objection. Do I understand the motion? I don't understand the motion. The approval, the approval, what is your fight? Motion approved. Approved. Uh, one, you, you're going to second one. Second. We're going to go one at a time, right? Yep. Yeah. This is the date right here. Yes. Mm How -hmm. you look? Yes, to approve. Yes. 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 All right. September 22nd. Motion approved as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll serve that for you. How you put it? Yes, two. Yes. Got two books, how you open it? Yes. Mm. Mr. Bond? Yes. Yes, okay. Both of us approved. Alright, I'm going to announce this again. Mobile Bachelor, October 7th, that's tomorrow. My son will have a shirt on the three fifty. They all help when you get that. Two trucks. Well, two trucks and one, I don't have to know if we're going to have it. November 19th, this is four. December 17th, this is three. All right. Do we need an effective session? Yes. Okay. Do we make a move? First thing, go ahead and get this session. Mr. Chairman. Is that a second? Thank you. 
pathogens can carry up to a six mile radius area in the air and you can be exposed to, to those different viruses that contain those pathogens. Uh, I'm sure that the city of Jeffersonville, you know, their solid waste, I'm sure that, that that's probably a class A. We don't have any industry here. We don't have any hospitals. You, you know, to add those extra, you know, hazards in that, that solid waste. But the city of Warner Robins, they have hospitals, nursing homes, they have funeral homes, and of course you've got the bags. So I haven't got any information back whether they are A or B permitted site. But I do know from the EPD that the company that runs the wastewater treatment center for Warner Robin does have a permit to apply that uh, wastewater sludge, you know, to the land. And I would just didn't know if the county knew about it, commissioners knew about it. And you know, I just really want, you know, more information, the long-term effects that this will have on our community and whether our water will be safe to drink in five years. According to what I read from the state of Ohio uh, EPA, it's not a matter if it gets into your water table. It's just a matter of time. They estimate anywhere from one to five years, depending on how far the well is from the application sites. That's the closest. And then this, this property also lies between Flat and Savage Creek. And then we have to worry about the runoff from, you know, this stuff being applied in and into our, you know, our waterways. This would be up right now. I didn't know we had an application site there, so that's going to have to be kind of looked into to see what okay. the direction it gives me. Come up here, what we do. I think I asked you a week or two ago to look in there. Yes, we looked at chicken. Chicken look. Yes. What he's talking about is actually wastewater from what they call sludge. No, the chicken manure is not, chicken manure is soft. It doesn't have any, there's no application side. What he's referring to, my understanding is, is actual sludge that has been processed through a plant that's actually being um, applied to land applications. And yes, there are um, land applications that you can apply that to after it's been processed. Did he um, I was not aware of that. We'll have to look into it to see exactly what we're dealing with. Well, that's why I wanted to bring yes, it to the because, um, because I, I had no idea that was going on at all. So because you know, this is being in. applied, it's being sold as fertilized. Right. But however, it's full of heavy metals, you know, pathogens, right. pyrons, and, and you know, it's really just not good for the environment. And you know, five years from now, is our water going to be safe to drink? Right. Uh, if our water's not safe to drink, and we have this hazardous place in our area where our property values aren't income, we can't sell our property and move anywhere. There's nobody going to move there, you know, because of that hazard. And, and if it's like, say, a farmer in this area, they did accept that for their fields. Most of the time, they're invested in their piece of property, in their community, and they'll follow more guidelines and they'll be more responsible. But when a corporation is dumping their waste, they have the opportunity to not be as responsible. And these people that own this property are not invested in our community. And once this place reaches its ceiling point, and it can no longer be applied there, well then they just sell the property and move on. In other words, they don't care what happens to the residents that live in that area. My granddaughter's two years old. She'll probably live there the rest of her life. I don't want to have to worry about her when she's older, that she has dementia, Alzheimer's, some of these other diseases, kidney, you know, diseases from the heavy metals and all the other pathogens that's out there. So it's not just 
I'm not worried about what's going on right now. And you know, I do know that it, it's legal within restraints. My thing is what's going to happen five and ten years from now. Because all of us have children and grandchildren that live there. You know, the water table there is 30 to 60 feet to start with in shallow lakes. That's a very sandy area. There's no bedrock or anything up under it to prevent those heavy metals from seeping down into our water tank. That's out of the park. That's going to be where in between Savage and Flake Creek, where Adams Park Road is. The property used to belong to my family. It used to be, if anybody knows where Durham Falk Store is, yeah, turn the dirt road it, it's at 1,200 acres behind that. But right in front of my son's home, there is an application site. And, you know, there are some concerns, you know, with that. That's something we have to check in because I didn't know that was going on. So that's something we have to look at. You can see what's going on. There's a road that goes up there on slow, like it's going to I live on the last house on the left for my grandmother and car stopped. I grew up on that piece of property before my family saw it. And I ain't the smartest person in the world, but we've been smelling the smell for a long time, and I've just always thought it's a dead animal. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife can vouch for it too, and we are the closest one to the application site. Um, and I'm talking about years. I smelled this smell, and I did not know what the smell was until Mr. Tim Taylor came and approached me and said, "Hey, have you been smelling this?" And then he started telling me about the, you know, the sludge and. And then he said, just do your research. And so he did. And there's tons of research out there. Y'all welcome to do your own research um, on universities and people like that that done research on it. And it's not good. It's, <laughs> Other than... Everybody wants to claim it's fertilizer. And they have to get rid of it. If it was a good, they would bag it and sell it. If it's, a, if it's a safe fertilizer, they wouldn't be giving it to farmers and land owners and then giving them the line to go with it, they will be selling it in Home Depot. And I just think, as a county, they should look into that if we want to continue this practice being done here for our future. They are allowing I guess, I really don't know what their operations are or exactly what they do. I, I do know that TTD has been contacted. And then part of the Alice culture, and they're looking into some of their practices. However, we're talking about budgets. Why are we allowing the city of Warner Robins to dump their waste in our county free? No matter who runs the company and who operates the water facility, it's still the city of Warner Robins stuff. You understand? I mean, I'm sure if big county sends trash to the landfill, do they pay a fee? But, but they're getting rid of their waste and making a profit. The more you know what's going on, so thank you for bringing it up to us. And now we got to look at it and see if that's what's happening. Is it legal to do this in the state? Well, apparently it is. It, no, as, long as, they meet, as long as they meet the guidelines set in 50, table 503. You can only have so much arsenic, so much copper, so much zinc. Now some of the pathogens and pyrons are not so regulated. But in those pathogens, there's birth control pills, blood pressure medicine, anything the hospital dumps, all that waste in, in, the, in that biosolid is a concentration of the waste that was removed from the water. So you can imagine the city of Warner Robins probably got some pretty nasty stuff. Talk about uh, also funeral homes. You know, you know, all the body fluids from funeral homes, hospitals, all that stuff, most of that stuff goes into the sewer. Well, some of those things do not die. They leave and they carry on. And the pylons can actually move into the hay, into the oats and stuff like that. You can't. None of the food can be used for human consumption. However, it can be fed to animals. But that's where mad cow disease comes from. From the pylons that live on through, you know, the hay and the feed. And some states have a lot of problems with their deer being infected. It's called, uh, I think it's called CWD. 
constant wasting disease. Now Georgia doesn't have any cases of this uh, again, but 26 states out of this country does. And it comes from that bio sludge, that wastewater sludge and the contaminants into it. So it's something that's kind of going on that nobody understands. We really don't understand the long-term effects. You know, we just now you find out that it that is, you know, happening. You can actually see where they dump it on top of it. Yes, I got, I got aerial photographs where you can see that this black stuff is being applied to the fields. They're dumping inside, it's, it, it's black. And we've got aerial photos of trucks coming in, you know, with this. I don't know how much they load their trucks with, whether it's 10 tons or 20 tons. Uh, we counted just offhand 12 trucks last week. If they are hauling 20 tons, that's 240 tons of this stuff in there last week. I mean, they put it on top of the earth. Yes, they dump it out, they load it into a spreader, the tractor spreads it out on the pastures and fields. Well, they call it the fertilizer? Or they use the fertilizer? Yes, that's what they, well, Does if you was a farmer, you would probably accept it yeah. as a fertilizer. ESG is using it to dump their waste. They're not in to farm. They might follow some practices of planting in, in Bell and Hyde, but they're not in the practice of farming. They own waste, they manage wastewater treatment centers in Georgia, Alabama, uh, Florida. They have Macon, Warren Robbins, Byron, Edenton, Perry. So I mean this is a large company. And then, you, you know, I just feel like it's, it's being used as their way of, you know, getting rid of their waste in an economic way. We appreciate you bringing Thank you. Thank you very much. to see what's going on. Okay. You will check it out. Uh, we will look into this, sir. Right. Well, I was unaware of it. Well, I've lived there all my life, and I go there all the time. And, I was unaware that it was going on, but I do know my son, especially in the last six months, has really complained about the smell. And he's not being over about his sinuses because when it rains, last week when it rained, and they did apply the stuff, he comes and his eyes are all swollen, his sinuses, his cheeks are swollen, and and so you know. You, you try to be fair about it and make sure that you're not just being hypochondriac and you're trying to relate that thing. But, like, we've got some dry weather right now and all, he's kind of fine. But if we have some rain moving in, and especially after they apply the sludge, he always has sinus and respiratory problems. And that goes along with the research that other people have done. So you're looking to I got the time to tell you why you all times, you know, the smell, you know, it's all out there. We can't even enjoy cooking outside. Yeah. yeah. I want to camp out with my dog. I can't go back to the dog. I can't live a mile and two tenths from the road. Cotton truck. You know, it's all. And it is. I have a park of it. I ain't going to have a park of it. And it is documented that these packages. It is documented that these passages will travel six miles away. You go to that and it's coming off 96. Go down, no, not coming off 96, 20, 20, 20. Okay. No, that was the UTD German. That's the old store you can see. That's what I'm talking about there. Carolina. Coming down. When you get that store, you turn right. Yeah. You go back and then you turn left. No, you go. If you talk about the store, uh, you get a paved road and you go to a dirt road, I live 1.2 miles. But the downside is behind the high fence. Yes. We yes. thank y'all for bringing that to our attention. Yes. 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 We will look into it, I promise. Paul, you want to say something? Yeah, my wife, we live close to him, which puts us almost two miles from the dump site. And she wants to buy a house that we have a place, it seems like we have to go stay. Those days we spent it, and one up there on the stage. She can come outside the house, it's so bad. It just makes her sick. That's bad. So we'll get the car and just get the door.
What does it smell like? Food. Food. It It ain't chicken food. Everybody did. People call me and say, people call. My son said, look, you smell like something is chicken food. It ain't. Yeah. I know what you're saying. I'll work with this. I have put out this chicken little. You got to smell it. Baby. Yeah, it does. Smell it smells. Now, it's my understanding that the city of Jeffersonville also gets rid of their, their sludge. And it's in a liquid form, and they spray it on hay feed. Hay feed. You, you, from what I understand, it's liquid. Right. The so it's the same process. However, I imagine what the city of Jeffersonville releases is a lot cleaner sludge than the city of Warner Robins just do that we don't have the contaminants going into the city water. It's like Warner Robins are making the path. What they spray is the same as what we're drinking and what that is is actually clean water. So your sludge settles out in there and what that runoff is from there is actually clean water that's been applied and that's actually basically water you're actually spraying on those fields in Jeffersonville, it's way on the fields that we're on the river here in Twix. Anybody else? The EPA did tell me that the county in the state of Georgia can prevent this with an ordinance against that. You have to be careful because the farmers are spreading the chicken with it. Yeah, when you, when you word it. That's what did they do? I'm talking. You can, the city, not the city, the county can stop. A lot of counties in Georgia and in, in the United States have banned these practices in their county. Some cities have banned the practice in their county. You have to think about it. He said, be careful when you word it because our farmers are yeah. putting out large amounts like this. He said, you can't ban it in the state of Georgia. Yeah. And I do have some contact information for the EPD that is handling the case. After numerous reports have been made, so if you want that, I can use that as much. Can we order a stop order? Yes, sir. Mr. Lewis, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm
built a nice house out there. And my house had had parts and not worth near what my house in Warner Island was worth. And my taxes in, in Twiggs County are $2,500 a year more than my house is in Houston County. And I got a 6,800 square foot house in Houston County. It cost me $2,500 a year less. My wife said, well, maybe we should rethink what we're doing. Because we're basically we building a house to come out here and retire. Let's go a little bit closer to me. <laughs> what you telling us to go out on the house park? It's almost $2,500 more a year than our house in Hopkins County. And compared to Sine County, my house in my house in Houston County is worth a lot more than my house in Twiggs County. My house in Houston County is 6,800 square feet, and it's in one of the south, I mean, not one of the south, but the south of So if you pull out of my driveway in Houston County and pull out of my driveway in Twist County, it's 8.8 .8 miles by traveling the dirt road. And the difference in taxes in that 8 miles is over $2,000. And then my youngest son, we built him a house on Adams Park Road, too. And his taxes for his little house, which I can show you a picture of, is more money than the taxes on my big house in house. What's your name? Um, yeah, what's your name? Steve Jensen. Yeah, Steve Jensen. Steve Jensen. Jensen. Yes. Okay. Where are you living on? 8792. 8792. That's my son. Mine's 9095. You turn it in right. Where is that? Where is that? Where is that? He is on the other side of the road. It's the big house, the two story. They go on the right. It looks good. Just before you get to my house at the top of the hill. You know you right here. You're on the left. I want that before you come to my house, about a quarter of an hour, his house is on the right. I'm going to put double wide there. You're working on it now, right? It's been working on it for five years. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we've worked them a long time. But, like I say, just kind of rethink our, our retirement plan. Because I was thinking that I moved out here, taxi would be less, but. Heck, right now my tax is what, two twenty-five a month. I don't own nothing on property, so my basic it costs me two twenty-five a month. So, um, okay, sir. Which if you're getting some of your money, it's nothing. But right now we got a really crappy dirt road that's really bumpy and bad. We got chicken yeah. everywhere, and, and the other slide you see, I pull out of there every morning because I stay down there fifty percent of the time. Fifty percent of the time, no problems. And every morning I see them done come from the sludge, they pull out of there about 6, 6, 10 in the morning. I see them either pull it in or pull it out. One morning you'll see a chicken truck dumping the litter, you know, dumping the chicken in the middle of the next day you'll see a sludge truck. So I imagine he sees more than what I see. But I counted 12 last week. But I mean, it's pretty bad at my house. You can smell it sometimes bad enough. You can't sit on the front porch. I I think there's around 1,200 acres in that track. You go on Google Maps, you can kind of see. You go on Google Maps, you can actually see the, the fields that have been cut out. When, when they bought this property, they transformed that property towards it to be an application site. <coughs> I mean, you know, we didn't know that to begin with. We just thought that he was putting in pastures and doing this work so that he could raise cattle. That's what I was talking about. I do know they put in three phase power to run some uh, pumps and stuff like that because they cut all our timber to widen the right away. Not the them, but the Georgia Power. Or I mean, a cone did cut our trees out. So I just feel like the property was bought to become an application site, you know, for this company of ESG. And I just don't feel like that's the same thing as, say, somebody living there to choose this as a fertilizer on their feet. Yeah, yeah, that's a different story. You know, you, that, that, that's kind of two different stories. I mean, you, you know, you've got two different motives to look at. You know, the ESG is profit. They don't care about our community or our environment. They're just trying to get rid of their, their, their waste that they generate every day. There's a picture of my house. You want to see what happened? That's what I do for a living. We build custom homes. Uh, try and bring a little something nice to the neighborhood. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Nobody else? Got a bunch of people in the place.
Because it's all he's done. Yes, he has. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, do you want to change the motion or do you want to? No, I'm going to move the motion. We check it. I got it. I'll take it. Check it. I'll go, I'll go Everybody the check it and check it and check it. I'm going to hold it. The man needs to be paid. The man needs to be paid and gone along with this a year ago. I want my money when paytime comes. Should have had it. It should not have happened. It's clearly where the misunderstanding came in. It's clear when you read the, 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 the wording of the law the way it was written. It was compound instead of straight, straight payout. It was compound from one year to the next three years, and the next three years it showed that compound in there. Whoever wrote it wrote the compound. We accepted, or the people before us accepted it. We agreed on it. That's what he was paying on the board did. And that's what he owed. He's old, paid a man, and, and move on. That's what I'm saying. I'm very proud of it. We've already done that three or four times. So the motion is as it stands. I'm not so sure it's so it. How much am I on this A little over 25,000. And this comes from where? I'm sorry. Where did this figure come from? It came from his accountant. Okay. Has it been verified by anybody? A lot of the documentation has come from myself, from ADP, probably back as far as um, 2014. That's the farthest um, I could find information that's currently in the office. Everything else would have to come from Carol, the previous payroll company. But everything that we had in house, I did present. Did you get to that with Carol? It went straight there. It went from Carol straight to his account. From Carol. Oh, so he got it from an accountant. And account is a figure that he submitted to us. He did something that he built yesterday. Well, you want to know which two we get to start to look at? You ain't got no problem with that? No, I ain't got no problem with that whatsoever. It's all there in black and white. If you can explain it, we can do that in But I would think it would be fair to the time to that, you know. You ain't got a problem. Good. Yeah. All right, you got a motion, you got a second. How you go? Yes. Yes.
Complete reparation. Complete. District 3. That's not a good thing. Great name. Huh? It's still there. Complete reparation. Complete. I'm sure that sounds good. District 3. District 3. Yeah. Second.
because we have to come back to the Bible. What do you think? I'll tell you, and here's what I'm trying to say. I give you an example of what I'm trying to say. In the last four years, you have violated, in all the sense of the word, direction from a federal court order that was written out to tell you how Tweets County should operate. Under that order, it tells you how to operate. You have dropped away from it, and, and, and don't realize that I don't think so. We made it up on. Okay, else? but here's what I'm trying to tell you. Let me get some finish. You made it this far because you hadn't had a challenge to it. But when the challenge comes, here you're facing two things. Here you're facing two things. When it's initiated, and it is the county responsibility, when it is done willfully by people who are aware, and they don't understand that how it's done, then you can be personally what, involved in all the county paying the, the damage. Nobody worries about it. But when it comes to where your value is, what you work for all your life comes to be of value, then you need direction. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. And that's what you're facing. Yes, I am. Second. 